So I'm going to tell you about Newton's law of gravity, but I didn't mention my picture of the day here is Newton's Principia. So this was the book of physics, basically, that Newton published um, that, you know, discussed calculus and the laws of gravity. Uh, this is Newton's original copy that I photographed in the Cambridge University Library. So it was a real big fangirl moment for me to see the actual Principia in person. So I have to show it off. All right, so why is this law of gravity such a big deal? Uh, well, because it's universal. So Newton found that gravity is the reason for attraction between objects with mass. Um, so this wasn't obvious um, at all to you know, ancient astronomers that the orbit of the moon around the earth was related to the same exact force that holds us to the earth, right? New uh, Newton was the one who actually connected those two ideas. So that's why it's such a big deal. So if we have any two objects with mass, let's say these are two asteroids, I guess, um, then they will be attracted together by the force of gravity. This is true for any two objects anywhere, um, but it's only really noticeable for um, cases where one of those objects has a large mass. All right, so in the presence of that force, um, objects will accelerate toward each other. This is a consequence of Newton's second law of motion. Um, and since both objects are attracted to each other, if you just had two objects floating in space, the force of gravity would over time pull them together. So they feel the same size of force. That's what's supposed to be um, shown by the length of the arrows here is the magnitude of the force that's pulling them toward one another. And so both objects experience the same force, but in opposite directions. All right. Um, so which pair of asteroids do you suppose feels a larger gravitational force? All right, I see the most votes for B. The right pair has the larger force. That's exactly right. So the distance between the objects is the same. Both of them are the same distance as far as I can tell from the length of this arrow. Um, but the right pair has a larger combined mass than the left pair. And so it turns out that when you have more mass in the system, that means stronger gravity in the system. So there's more force between these pair of asteroids than this pair. All right, so similar question, but things have changed. So look carefully at the diagram here and now answer which pair would feel the stronger force. All right, I see mostly A with a few votes for C. If you voted for C, I'll give you the technical because I've labeled both of those distances as R, even though the, the arrow over here is definitely longer. So maybe I should have labeled this 2R or something. Um, but if you just went by the length of the arrow and ignored the label, then the left pair has the stronger force. Um, the reason is that gravity is strongest when two objects are really close to each other and it gets weaker and weaker and weaker as you get farther away. So there's you know, some distance at which the force of gravity from the sun is equal to the force of gravity from other nearby stars. And that kind of determines the so-called gravitational sphere of influence of our sun. Um, so objects on the very periphery of our solar system uh, barely notice the sun's presence compared to other stars. But all of the planets and asteroids and even comets and um, other objects in the Oort cloud, all the stuff in our solar system, the sun is the primary source of gravity that influences those objects. But there can be other things, right? It's not just between planets and the sun, but the uh, gravity of, for example, Jupiter is also really important in our solar system um, because it's so massive. So there are basically two important factors for gravitational force. One of them is the mass of the two objects, and the other one is the distance between the objects. So um, Newton combined his law of gravity with Kepler's laws and took Kepler's third law from a you know, proportionality relationship to a real life equation. And the idea is that you have two masses. One of them is, we're gonna call it MO, the mass of our object. The other mass is MC, the mass at the center 
of the orbit. And if we um, use um, Newton's laws together with Kepler's third law, then this proportionality relationship is replaced by an exact measure of the combined mass of those two objects. All right, so now instead of having, uh, you know, this being only good for our solar system, now we can extend Kepler's third law and consider any object orbiting anything with some central mass. So in the case of the Earth and the Sun, the Sun is much, much more massive than the Earth. And so you can effectively throw out, cancel out the mass of the orbiting object and ignore it completely. And in this case, this is really handy dandy because you could then use, for example, the orbital period of the Earth and the semi-major axis of the Earth to measure the mass of the Sun. And actually, once you have that, then you can use this relationship to calculate any masses that you're interested in, as long as you know the period in years and the semi-major axis in units of AU, then that mass will come out in units of the sun's mass. So there was a pre-class question about this um, that I think a lot of people missed. And it was when we put these equations together, what is Newton able to calculate? And the answer is the mass of the sun. So that's, that's where that idea comes from. <laughs>